Hey, hey, what's good? Hey, what's, what's up? Devo Sloth, what's Devo up, man? Sloth How are himself. You? I'm all good. How are you guys? Oh, good. I love your background. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, while we're waiting, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Okay, so. Oh, oh, well, first question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> get right to it. Get right to it. <laughs> hey, man, we got him. Oh, here's Slothy is right here. So, uh, what's the first question? Hit me up. Well, you know, just a little about who you guys are, where you're from, you know. Are you guys just regular people from <laughs> New Zealand, right? Correct? So, we do live in New Zealand. We're not from New Zealand. Mm. Um but yeah, we're very regular people. I came from uh, from Europe. Frank is from South America. Uh, yeah, we were developers with over a decade of experience, mm -hmm. and at some point we just started doing this. Uh, what kind of developers do you guys? Uh, I'm mainly backend. Uh, I have been doing like Java, C sharp. JavaScript on the back end, like all kinds of languages. And mm. then I switched to Rust for, okay. for this project, to be honest. So it was a tough cookie in the beginning. Like Rust is not an easy language. Solana development is so much harder than pure Rust. But in the end, it looks like it worked out. Yeah, it does look like it's worked out for sure. For sure. Man. So were you guys like heavy? And what's up, Slot? How you doing? Yeah, hey, what's up, Slothy? I think he's Frank. on mute, but uh, yeah. Guys, sorry. Yeah, I'm just no. trying to uh, fix some issues with my computer. <laughs> no worries, no, no worries. Problem, no problem. How are you all? Sorry I'm late. No, oh, we're good. We're good. No worries. Yeah, we were having some technical difficulties with Zoom early, but, you know, we're all good. We're all good in the hood. <laughs> well, it seems to be working now. Yeah, we so. are. So, so what, like, where, where were you while we were for Saudi? So, where were you guys in the whole, you know, crypto space? You know, let's say like a month or um, maybe two or maybe six months before you know, Slot Patrol was uh, conceived. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So I actually started to learn about cryptocurrencies because I kind of started to get into trading and more learning more about investment. And of course, one path uh, guided me to another. I started to learn into crypto. It was kind of this rabbit hole when you start to read and you find the, all these amazing projects. And mm -hmm. then you start to see the amazing community that it's all over the crypto space. Um, so how I get into NFTs because people that I read on Twitter, like, are well-known developers or well-known entrepreneurs and actually entrepreneurs from South America. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started to read and kind of started to put the dots together. Uh, there was Lop and I were talking for quite a while to try to start a project and this was it started to be kind of in the right place in the right moment um so that's how we basically started we basically started to throw ideas out check technologies um mm -hmm. and everything started to uh the jigsaw started to take shape and that's how we came here hmm. okay. yeah okay yeah, so i would um, yeah i would think that like most people got into mts because they were into crypto first and uh do, so, do you guys have a first NFT that you guys remember was your first NFT, or did you <laughs> just buy some nonsense? Like, I think I think the first NFT I bought was just some nonsense. Like, I didn't even. Yeah, same here. I think I bought. I don't know. It was like some ugly looking guy. <laughs> just got a he had a Binance hoodie on. I forget the name of it. It was terrible looking. <laughs> so you're not gonna believe this, but my first NFT was the Slow Patrol. Oh. I have never purchased any NFT before. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Same for you, so Slop? For, 
Nah, he, he was in it before. I mean, I let him t- to do the talking. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it was kind of similar for me. Like I started to check out onto NFTs um, and I started to get involved. Like I started to read about the projects. And of course I do like the art, but I saw more potential. Uh, like I, I saw- More potential to be an artist? Yeah. Mo- I do like the idea of artists having this opportunity to earn money because I guess internet give this opportunity to just yes, publish this stuff, but sell things it was kind of complicated or to actually show that your art is original and it wasn't just downloaded from some anonymous page. Mm. Um, so that's definitely something that it's interesting, uh, how you can encourage artists to create more material and be recognized for that. And now with everything that is happening, you can see that there is more, you can join community, you can join different kind of artists and skills. Um, just illustrators, designers, uh, video producers, and then you can add utility on top of that. And then you can put developers to create video games and you can create communities to actually write lores or write the whole story of that. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit a game changing between uh, of how things were working before, because you know that the development companies or the big video games companies usually work just, they have an idea and it's all closed and then they basically release. There is not much of an opinion from the community. And in this case, it's different. Like people actually could build the stuff and it's a little bit more, um, there is a little bit more of appropriation. So that's- Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna jump in here just to say one thing, sorry. Uh, And this is what we tried to do from the beginning with our community. Like we have this dream big channel and we have the special role called dreamers. And those are just the people that we recognize in our community that are bringing good ideas in so we wanted to just give them another option to just speak up and be heard because on, in the general channel you can just drop a good idea and nobody's gonna see it because it just moves so fast right oh yeah oh, so yeah. we have this specific channel where recognized people can drop their ideas but everyone can read them everyone can vote with emojis and like if someone just drops a good idea and everyone else is like yeah this is amazing you know click 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to see that and we're like, okay, let's do something with it. So it's like a community driven development. Hmm. That is very interesting. Yeah. Cause there's a good amount of NFT projects I've seen where maybe they have a decent recommendation. I mean, in terms of the community members, they might have a decent recommendation saying, Hey, you know, this would be cool if you guys implemented this with the project or that. And I've seen some projects, maybe they just ignored some projects. They just completely just, ah, you know, I don't want to see, you know, from this person again, we'll do what we want to do. And I think a lot of success in the NFT space and just in general comes when you can actually just kind of cater to your community and give them what they want, you know, so, so to speak. So Exactly. Because like, as far as we're concerned, it's not about us. Like we mm-hmm. released the primary project that's about us. Mm-hmm. But after that, it's about the community involvement and building and like relating to people actually. For sure, for sure. There's a lot of there's a lot of rug pulls out here, you know. They just oh. drop the NFT and then nothing comes <laughs> afterwards. And uh yeah. I'm I also uh love the fact that you did mention uh you know the gaming. Trust me guys, I did not tell them to say that. They know over here that I'm so <laughs> bullish on NFT gaming. I think it's going to be a big space. It's going to be big for the whole gaming community. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that you guys see that too. A little, little bit of validation, yeah. <laughs> so uh, how many people do you guys actually have on your team? And how did you guys decide on the sloths themselves? And how did you guys meet? Because it seems like you guys have a very diverse background. Yeah. Very diverse. How did you guys yeah. meet? <laughs> I mean, you already know that we both live in New Zealand, so mm-hmm. this is the connection. We actually met in a workplace and we worked together for over a year or so. And then I left that place, uh, Slothy State, but mm-hmm. we just stayed friends. And in the meantime, we had a lot of ideas of like how to create a business. But for some reason, you know, we had those brainstorming sessions. And maybe this was a good idea, but it wouldn't work out because of this, or maybe we don't have enough uh, like financial support to launch something and so on and so on. But we really were brainstorming all the time about what can we do? And we actually wanted to have some like social impact as well, because kind of the idea for us is that 
the old way of doing business as in get as much money as you can and don't care about anyone else is mm-hmm. like not the way to move forward yeah and maybe because we are just not from wealthy families like we never experienced that crazy wealth that some people have so we just wanted to share the love so to speak mm-hmm. so uh we started working with this uh, sloth conservation foundation which is a like charity for sloths and i believe that you even have the graphic i buy I love that slot, by the way. I honestly love it. I Which think one? it may be one of the... or me? Who are you talking to? Uh, Frank, sorry. I'm talking oh, okay. to Frank. <laughs> uh, I mean, the swimming one is cool as well. But the one that Frank Yeah, has, get that one out of here. You don't want to see the swimming <laughs> one. No, he's oh, smiling. My, my. I'm looking at him. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, we wanted to do some good in the world. And at least for me, I'm going to speak for myself. Not once in my life, I thought that... I personally will be able to help someone, something mm-hmm. in a way that's not like on a personal level, you know, right now we have built a system that will be able to help systemically. Maybe not like we're not going to cure cancer or anything like mm-hmm. that, but we will help those animals. We will help those people that live in that area to get educated a bit better. We will help to build some infrastructure in that area. Like it's not going to change the world. Or maybe not in a like big way, but mm-hmm. it's a small break to making the world a better place. So this is mm-hmm. actually our like primary drive. Okay. So so you guys were like real deal, hands on, like feeding the slaws, like you guys you guys seen slaws in real life. No, we, we have I mean I haven't seen them. <laughs> but uh so the idea of slots, like uh if you ask me what's like my imaginary animal representation of myself it would be uh, a sloth. Your spirit animal <laughs> it's a spirit animal. <laughs> spirit animal that's the one so it would be a sloth and i just like those animals because they are chill they they are like chill all the time they move slowly you know they don't care about too too much and just the idea of them is cool so we figured why not that hmm Okay, I like it. Okay, I like okay. it. <laughs> so but you guys, oh, about okay. holding sloths and seeing them and whatnot, we actually already got invited to Costa Rica by the Sloth Foundation, so hmm. we can visit, we can hang around with them, and probably we will go next year, maybe. Hey, I'm Ooh. in Discord. We would love to see those pictures. Oh, if you go, okay, okay. If you go over there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> hey, yo, you got to hold them in the arms. So you got to <laughs> yeah, <you gotta>, cradle. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> but. But j- just to make it clear, I don't know if you guys saw it. We had like a live AMA with the sloth doctor. She said that holding sloth is actually not a very safe thing to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, those claws. <laughs> yeah. And those teeth, actually, they have like fangs. And apparently they are like super strong. So it's a small animal, but they are so much stronger than people. So if you ha- hug a sloth and this sloth actually doesn't like you, like if he gets a grip on you, you like no human will ever be able to pull him off of you mm. so he's gonna just jump very slowly on you and just gonna bite pieces of you you don't okay. want that all right <laughs> yeah yeah so okay. they are cute but don't make them angry <laughs> for sure for sure yeah so <laughs> you know we got a little bit why you guys like sloths a little bit more into the crypto side what made you decide on solana of the cryptocurrency that you were going to use to support this project. I could take this one, but Slothy, do you want to? Ah, go for it. Okay, because there are two things in here, at least from my personal perspective. One thing is that I like I started learning crypto when I uh, went for a Solidity course. So Solidity is for Ethereum, mm-hmm. and because like. Bitcoin is essentially useless. Like it doesn't have any additional utility. <laughs> like it's just a value holder. Yeah. You cannot do anything with it. That's true. So Ethereum is more interesting. It has solidity. You can develop some interesting things, but it's limited. Like from a developer's developer's perspective, it's very limiting. Mm-hmm. And also, it's just slow and expensive right now. Like one transaction, one hundred and fifty dollars. Give me a break. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> Going exactly. through it. Going through it. <laughs> so. So I was actually just searching for something that's more affordable to more people. Mm. And there were a couple of options, but Solana was just the best one technically. Like Rust as a language is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the proof of history algorithm, I think it's actually groundbreaking. I think 
that this is literally the future of crypto. Like if others do not appropriate, maybe it's, I don't know, uh, protected by law by now. Maybe they have a patent for it. If mm -hmm. they do, Solana is just going to break the game, honestly. Solana, it's Solana has been so breaking. much faster. It yeah. has been like, like it has been climbing steadily. And I don't believe that it's going to like get ahead of Ethereum like this year or next year, but like in five years, mm -hmm. I can see it happening mm. because right now Ethereum is lagging heavily with those like super high fees and like yeah. layer two protocols. Like there are some things built uh, as layer two, right? Immutable mm -hmm. X or whatnot for M NFTs. But the projects launching there, they have a lot of problems like transaction issues. They have errors, then they need to fix them. Like you don't see that on Solana. Solana just works. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. So, and real quick too, before you get into like you know the next part of this, you did mention yeah. proof of history algorithm. For the viewers that might not know, uh, could you give like a brief rundown of what that proof of history algorithm would be? Like a quick summary. So uh, I'll just maybe recap a bit more. So Solana doesn't only have the proof of history; it also has proof of stake. Mm -hmm. So Ethereum is investing time and money into developing proof of stake to be implemented like next year, I believe. Uh, and proof of stake is essentially you have money invested into the blockchain, you have a stake, therefore you can validate. So you don't need to prove that you did the work, yep. uh, which is a game changer on its own. But proof of history makes the whole thing so much faster because it also validates when the action has been taken and on multiple different validators, many things can be validated at the same time. But at the end, it kind of merges together based on this proof of history. So mm -hmm. what it means is that whole network can work so much faster and without being congested because mm. like things get validated faster. Mm. That, right, is that is dope. Right, that's game, feet. guys. It's mm. game for sure. For sure, for sure. So with the uh, Solana ecosystem. Second thing. Oh, Just second thing. Let me know. Uh, let, let me tell it because it's also important. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of like criticism going on around for cryptocurrencies uh, because like, oh, they destroy the world because they're so expensive. Like they're the Chinese factories mine coal and whatever. You heard all that. Oh, cool. no. So this is all true for Ethereum and Bitcoin because of proof of work. Solana doesn't have it. Like you have just over 1000 validators all over the world now, which means roughly 1000 servers. It's a mm -hmm. medium-sized company size, like count. So if you think about Google, Google has millions and millions of servers. So maybe let's talk about something smaller. I don't know, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Wikipedia is actually bigger than whole Solana network when it comes to server count, which means that Wikipedia get, like, eats more energy. Mm -hmm. So Solana actually is not the problem when it comes to like fossil fuels or energy consumption or anything. It's essentially almost carbon neutral which is great mm. all right all right hey, hey tell definitely them run with that tell that them what a it lot is of yeah. for the win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly for sure for sure so uh moving away from cryptocurrencies a little bit all right in the nft space uh we see ethereum we know that they dominate uh well they ethereum does dominate the whole nft space but specifically it is open sea goes crazy when it comes to uh solana what is uh your guys's favorite marketplace and why all right um i think we both agreed on this one and so far our favorite marketplace is magic eden i do um, like magic eden their customer service is amazing. If you ask for something, they will ask super fast. Um, if they can't actually do it right away, they will tell you it's going to take this amount of time and they are going to respond in that amount of time. They are quite open to receive new ideas and to collaborate uh, with projects. And I'm saying this because it's from our experience. I don't want to spoil anything, but it could be happening something with them, specifically with the slow patrol. I think uh, they are actually developing pretty fast. Their updates are, you can see how fast they are moving. Every day mm -hmm. they are doing upgrades. Uh, I know there, there are a few interesting things coming from there. Mm, the marketplace, it's going to be huge. There is going to be a few that are going to be launching. 
I'm going to say that Alpha Art, the their approach is quite interesting too. Mm -hmm. um, they're fast. Yeah, they're fast. Definitely, they're fast. Uh, however, I will say that there is a still a lot of open opportunities. Uh, there is a still a lot to develop, and the marketplace is quite new. Even Solan Art, which is like the big one. Mm. I think uh, collections will gain more power when more integration is coming on the uh, marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And it will help if they actually work together with the biggest communities right now or with all communities are, are all, because there are, there are good ideas that could come from the projects and from the marketplaces. Uh, but yeah, at the end, for me at least, uh, Magic Eden is the best one right now. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that competition will definitely help to, you know, make it better. I do see, like, you can go on one day, and then next week, like, you can see the UI is updated. It's, you know, moving smoother, more additions and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you guys you guys have definitely built a, a great community with Slow Patrol. I, I see all the memes. I see people <laughs> having fun. <laughs> they cannot wait for breeding. <laughs> Get some horny bashes over there. <laughs> when the fuck? Yeah, we, we have a bot for that. The, the bot tells when fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think is is key to building uh, a great community when it comes to NFTs and uh, cryptocurrency or anything like this in the space mm -hmm. of uh, blockchain? I um, guess. I, okay. Okay. Yeah. Go on. I will say it's not trying that hard um, because I don't want to say that you should not try to build a community, mm -hmm. but it should grow organically. And that's one of the things that we love about our community, that it's growing like that. Um, mm. We have amazing people there and we have people that it's contributing every day. Uh, as there was love said before, we created that dreamer role just for the people that started to contribute from the beginning of the um, project. And mm -hmm. to be honest, uh, this is probably something that is quite, uh, let's say, a secret, but they have a little bit of a benefit to be dreamers. Uh, so if we need to ask something or we want to release something, probably they are the first ones to know. Uh, mm. And that kind of builds a certain amount of confidence with the community. They know that we are working. They know that we have ideas. They know that we are uh, just there. Um, mm -hmm. And... One of the things it's also we like transparency. Um, our project is not perfect. Definitely. We know uh, there have been things that we haven't done well from the beginning, but mm -hmm. it's part of the process of learning as uh, entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. The growing pains. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, however, <clears throat> we put those discussions up to the community. Of course, we have the discussions as a team, but there is always this point that we have built, and it's not something that we force between each other. It's just something that it has been there always, let's ask the community, let's uh, share this with them, uh, let's let them decide because they have a mm -hmm. voice here. This is what we're building is not for the developer, for me or for the rest of the team, it's for the whole community and we have thousands of people right now uh, that are there waiting to fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it's, yeah. it's not PG-13. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Don't worry, we, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, you can beep it out, you can beep it out. <laughs> nah, nah. We need more, we need more. <laughs> but yeah, in general, it's about that. It's like, if they want to raise their voice, um, we will let them and we will hear them. And as Devo said, we have a Dream Big channel, which is for people that is contributing and mm -hmm. making big suggestions. And we have a list of all of those ideas um, and we have reviewed some of them. And there is probably some of them are going to uh, come to like and are going to be part of the next stages of the roadmap. Um, of course, we can't say this um, as it is certain because we don't know what is going to happen in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. The only thing is uh, we're trying to just work hard and just um, deliver what we are promising. So, yeah. so you guys would say that you you've learned during this process. Like you didn't have it all figured out from the beginning. You've like oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that that's a that's the whole journey basically. Because 
we created this community like basing it all on transparency and we like many times we just have been asking questions what would you guys prefer so we would have like discussions for days or even weeks mm -hmm. within the team like is this better or is that better and like at the end we just came to a conclusion well we're not the ones to choose like we can show the people that like those three are the options you know mm -hmm. this emoji means number one this emoji means number two you guys tell us and we had a couple of like pretty big votes so far and you know we are just gonna keep on doing that for sure mm. for sure i love it okay I love definitely it. like it I, yeah because yeah yeah, I mean, I, I've seen and going back to like what we were discussing earlier on, I've seen some different NFT projects like how you Slothy had mentioned like organic growth. I see, you know, different like, for instance, like social media stars or influencers and stuff and they come out with their NFTs and Lord, it just it looks so fake because it's just they're promoting it, shoving it down our throats. Like, hey, you need to buy it because it's me and it just looks ridiculous. And then you join the Discord and after it drops, it doesn't do well. And it's just like. You can't even talk to the developers. You can't talk to anybody. It's just the community just sitting here, just scratching their head, just like, what's going on? Where are we? What's happening? And, oh, mm -hmm. man, a lot of people there, you know, I think they, they turn into NFT haters that way, to be honest. Celebrity, but, yeah. uh, show uh, NFT one day and then never talk about it again. And it's, it, I don't think it, I don't think it's good for the space. Uh, well, it's good in the sense that people will learn from it that, you know, you got to go to the people that, you know, are actually for you, that are going to be transparent, that are going to, you know, communicate with the fans. And yeah. I, I am definitely glad that you guys, uh, hmm. you know, respond the same way. And yeah, absolutely. Understand this I'm not trying way. to be like in Pulp Fiction when John Travolta just standing there looking around like, what's happening? What's up? <laughs> that is not trying to, hey, that's not going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a very, this is, because uh, I, I, I do like have a lot of NFTs myself. And this is something I've always wondered when it comes to making an NFT and uh, building an NFT. How do you guys choose what's going to be rare, what's going to be mythical, mm. you know, like what's, you know, you mm. get the robot, the, <laughs> the, the, the zombie, like how do you, how do you decide? Because there's so much good stuff. There's it so is, much good stuff is, that you yeah. can use. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's just, from my side, it was just the artistic view of our artist. And I, I sometimes did disagree, like we could move this around or something, but I just believed in his vision and like, looks like it's working out. Mm. Okay. 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 When it comes to the rarity and stuff, right? So he said, "All right, this like uh, DMT skin is only gonna be this many," and you guys are just like, "Sure." So okay, the the process actually went the other way. So uh, because I'm the backend developer, right? Mm -hmm. So I was figuring out how to do the whole generation process, how to save it on the blockchain and whatnot. So mm -hmm. at some point, the blockchain part got a lot easier thanks to the candy machine produced by Metaplex. If you guys are unfamiliar or your viewers, I'll just send you to the Metaplex webpage, mm -hmm. uh, or rather their GitHub. Probably their webpage doesn't have this information even. Their GitHub is just pure gold, but it's not very well documented. Real, real quick, how, how important do you think GitHub is? Because I, I, just, I, I just can't understand it. You, should I be using GitHub? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not a developer then probably not but for us developers this is like the go-to place for everything that's like this is where the code is stored so if i want to yeah. do something with metaplex i go to their github i download their project and then i just read it it's like thousands and thousands of lines of code and i have to figure out my way around it but then when i do it all makes sense and it just then you know it makes sense to use it mm -hmm. Dope, for sure. So, so go, <laughs> going back to that, uh, so the candy machine helped releasing the projects. And this is probably why you have seen so many projects being released on Solana mm -hmm. lately. That's because of the candy machine. Mm -hmm. um, but the art itself, like I suppose every project has their own version of the, the generation engine. So mm -hmm. I just figured that Okay, and some projects have like this one attribute, this like 0 0.00001 possibility to get it. And like, maybe there are going to be three. Mm -hmm. So we figured, let's not do that. Let's do it the other way around. So we just created those rarity groups. So you have common, uncommon, rare, legendary, and mythic, right? 
And then we just place according to like the coolness factor. Uh, like if something is like extremely cool, for example, the joint or the zombie fur, like this is the mythic material that's oh, yeah. right there. So just based on that, we started filling these categories and that was pretty much it. Mm. Okay, and okay. actually some of the attributes we had because we released 165 attributes mm -hmm. we had roughly 180 but we just decided to drop some of them because like mm. we didn't feel that they are cool enough to be even a common attribute mm. okay okay very interesting yeah definitely because like you mentioned some of these projects uh you know when i see like when you go through like the different traits and it's just you know you look whether it's like the skin of it or the actual like the fact like maybe it's like the item they have in their hand or something and you're just looking like oh like the 0.001 percent chance of getting it you're just looking like wow am i playing the lottery or like what's going on because it's just you're looking yeah. and trying to see okay i really want something good but you know if it's just a rare chance that i'll get it or an insane chance uh or insanely high probability that i might get it then it's just I mean, it could turn some people away so I like that. I like that, man. Yeah. yeah. So in our system, you essentially just run them out the rarity level, and mm -hmm. then you can get any of those like things in that rarity level. You have the same chance to get any of them. So it's mm -hmm. kind of more fair, I suppose. Hmm. Okay. 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 Very interesting. Very interesting. Yo. Ah, long time no see, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got the sick background. Yeah. Got the sick background. Oh, you guys didn't tell me though. Which one? Which uh, which one is uh, your favorite skin of? Uh, oh, sauce? yeah, you gotta pick one. You gotta pick mm, one. Only pick one. Oh. If you could only have one sloth NFT, I mean, it doesn't even have to be the skin. What are you basing it off of? What do you guys like the most? I mean, for me, it's it's probably not gonna be very very uh, different than most people actually, but I really love the demon one. Mm. like Demon the slot. number one the rarest possible slot is just mm, it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey you hit it with the chef's yeah, kiss, the chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> i mean come on the flaming sword the horns the everything like uh, it's just yeah. amazing yeah. it's not very slothy but it's amazing <laughs> i would agree i'd agree okay okay and you slothy uh for me it's going to be Zombie slot with a lightsaber. I wanted right. the lightsaber so bad. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love the demon one, but I don't know. I just like a lot the the zombie form. It's and amazing. there is actually the <clears throat> the lightsaber gang coming up on Discord, right? Yeah. Lightsaber gang. <laughs> oh, we, we already have the slowpoke gang. Actually, I okay. don't know if you guys know. But Jordan from from Metaplex, like he was the head developer there. I think that he's moving somewhere right now. I'm not quite sure where. But so he started the slot pope gang, and then Bartosz from Metaplex, like he, mm -hmm. his best buddy there, uh, he also put the slot pope as his PFP on Twitter. Mm. And then after them, the CEO of Metaplex, Adam Jeffries. So we had like this. This was the beginning of slot pope gang. Like the Metaplex guys actually. You know, th this was a great support from them for our project. Mm. Um, we like we didn't want to market it too much because it felt like they just did it organically. We would, didn't want to push it. Like mm -hmm. maybe some other people would just start spamming them or whatever. Like I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just because we are not very very well versed with marketing, but we didn't want to bombard them with spam. So mm -hmm. we were just very very thankful, but we didn't market it well. Okay. Um, so yeah. That happened, and this was the beginning of the Sloth Pope gang, and after that, just a lot of people started buying Sloth Popes, actually. So the floor was, at the time, right, roughly 0 0.9 sol or something. Mm -hmm. The cheapest Sloth Pope was at 6. Mm. So wow. it, someone actually won a dress. I don't know who that was, but they just bought 10 or 15 Sloth Pope ac across all marketplaces mm. uh, as well. So, yeah, that was interesting. So people are starting to figure out what they are interested in, and like some gangs are being created. And actually, <laughs> this may be a small teaser. We want to indulge that. Like we want to create, okay, I'm, I'm like not gonna- Small pocket communities? <laughs> yeah, let's just call it that. Like I, I'm not gonna use any 
copyright protected names just yet. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we want to create some communities around those. That should be interesting. Okay, okay, okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, uh, there's a. Uh, have you guys heard of uh, uh, Cipher? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they do a thing like that where they have like three different brotherhoods and mm -hmm. they be they had like wars and like they had an art war like oh man i've seen some of the memes that they create in the uh, slow patrol that yo you got to you got to make them go to war for sure <laughs> all, all, all good yeah. love and fun but <laughs> yeah you make them do an art competition holy uh, i i know i see some good stuff yeah it it would be really interesting like we had already one competition but it was like a pretty generic one, you know, this is the sloth way. And people created some cool stuff. The lightsaber stuff was yeah. there. There was one ever, like the Statue of Liberty sloth. I was oh, like, that's, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, that's <laughs> all. That's all that was for sure. Uh, yeah, someone also created like sloths horizontally, like one after another. They they looked like they were walking on a on a rope of some sorts in the, in the mm. loops of, of the city. Like, I don't know, pretty, pretty cool things were created, but I agree that like a meme war of some sorts, let's not, let's call it, actually, this is our, another thing. We don't want to indulge in like violence or anything. So also when we created those mechanisms, mechanisms that, that we did, mm -hmm. or at least that we described, we didn't want to burn slots or mm -hmm. some people said that we should sacrifice a slot to get the stats <laughs> boost. And we're like, oh, yeah. we're not sacrificing. Like we are not sacrificing anyone. <laughs> Every single sloth is precious. We're gonna love them all. Mm -hmm. So, what we figured out is that we can fuse them. Like, you know, fusion is actually bringing more value, right? Instead of destroying. Yep. So, like, this is our thing. We we want this the whole message of our channel, of our project, to be like it's just chill to hang out. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Everyone, everybody has a chance to just you know, not be attacked by anything in this space. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Um, That's dope. So yeah. when you slaws to chill. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> exactly. I like that a lot. So, you know, we've alluded to it, but I gotta ask, when fuck? When breeding? <laughs> and tell us a little bit about it, because, uh, you know, I, I, I am very excited for when that is ready to happen. You know, I know that you're going to have the, you know, you're going to be able to put your sloth up for, uh, you know, put them <laughs> on the marketplace, you know, show a little leg, you know, but who the boys. That's coming up a bit later on. The donor market is uh, like the third step on our roadmap. The second is the breeding. So first you're going to have to own at least two sloths to breed. Mm -hmm. But when fuck, like as our bot says, November, uh but to give you a bit more info actually literally five minutes before this meeting we released a second article that goes in depth into breeding mm. uh, and it also explains luck level as well in more detail yep. so it would be interesting to get your thoughts on this guys um but to to give you a quick rundown we introduced another hmm, Another functionality to breeding mm -hmm. to actually help people that have only like common slots to have some fun as well, because mm -hmm. as we said before, like we want this community to be inclusive and fun. And then mm -hmm. if it's only about the most mythical slots, then it's not fun for everyone. Right? No. So if your slot is actually common enough, it will have a chance. Like if you, if you breed two common slots, the outcome can actually be a full reroll with like a stats boost. Hmm. That's dope. That's dope. So interesting. If you guys take a look at our Twitter, this is probably like the latest tweet up there. And you'll see some stats, you'll you'll see some uh potential outcomes from two pretty common slots. Um but yeah. This, so this is the latest news. And this mm -hmm. is not the end. This is by far not the end. We have so many things lined up to release in the following four weeks about that. So stay tuned. You're going to see some cool things that you have never seen before in a Solana project. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just want to add something to the. Uh, we are actually hosting a party in our Discord channel on the 5th of oh, that's November. True. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have prepared quite a few activities to 
uh, just have fun with people. There is going to be some giveaways, of course, and there is going to be a huge announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just say there is. You have to follow the leads. Ah, no, nah, I need more. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting rid of. I need more. <laughs> Hey, oh, okay, okay, November okay. 5th. Oh, we will be yeah. on the lookout. Oh, yeah, you know we will be on the lookout. lookout. Okay, okay. Definitely, definitely. Slow Patrol is one of those discords I definitely check at least once a day, you know. Yeah, yeah for, sure. Those, for sure. Because I know, it's, I, I'm a, if anything, I at least live, leave with, uh, with a laugh. Because That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. They are, they are funny. They are funny for sure. The, the memes are strong. <laughs> so, do you guys have any... And uh, so you don't have to give it all away, but I want to know, like, like how lofty of goals do you guys have? Like, you know, and I don't even want to give you any ideas. Like, you, you let me know because a lot, you know, <laughs> uh, if you guys know Pop Smoke, you know, shoot for the moon, aim for the stars, you know, is, mm -hmm. a, is a good term. Uh, but yeah, how big do you guys think you can get with Slow Patrol or how big do you want to get? Uh, a little bit about that. Uh, should I take that or you? Go for it. Okay, so the thing is, we want to keep it realistic for now. So that the goals that we have are very obtainable. Right now, we want to show to people that we deliver what we say that we are gonna. Like we want to ship, show to people that we didn't abandon them. So mm -hmm. telling them, you know, we are going to build this great game and it's going to be in three years. Who cares? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, not lying, not lying. <laughs> yeah. So we just want to show that like within a month and a half, essentially, we can deliver something that's, you know, cool and it brings some novelty into the system. So probably every next goal that we are going to have is going to be bigger and it's going to take more time. Mm -hmm. But we just want to start with this like with a like teaching people that they can trust us essentially mm. that we're gonna deliver what we said okay and yeah that that's pretty much it so let's start small and then let's just start climbing up really fast i like that it sounds like you really want to build with your community i definitely like yeah. that but i did ask that question because uh, mm, you, know, you activated my trap card. <laughs> <laughs> because I do know, I, you know, I'm very heavy into the NFT space. I mean, that's what we do over here, uh, as well as, you know, stocks, crypto and all that. But when it comes to, you know, the NFT space, uh, we're seeing a lot of different things, you know, come about and come alive. Things that were just never even possible before, such as play to earn, such as DAOs. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys think about uh, those? Oh, and like tokenizing and all that kind of stuff. What do you guys think about adding that to Slow Patrol? Do you have any visions of those things in there? Yes, uh, all of them. Um, and here again, to be honest, some of them came from the community. Mm -hmm. We have a huge backlog of things that we have uh, that we want to achieve and that we want to build. Uh, but we are, we want to be realistic here and just do baby steps because we can't promise everything at the same time. We do have a set, a goal set the, of things that we want to implement, but it's going to take time. We can't say, oh, we are going to be down now. We are going to the moon tomorrow because it's not going to happen from today to tomorrow. Uh, however, we have a list of ideas. Actually, Devos Love called me dreamer because I'm all, all every day throwing new ideas into the project <laughs> and he's the backing guy. Uh, he's, the, he's even more realistic than me. And he's always like, this is too complicated. We have mm. to modify so many things. Um, so we do want to incorporate um, more things into the system and create more utility. Um, but it's going to take time. Like I said, it's in the backlog. Um, and it's just there, ready mm -hmm. to be built. We just need the time to do it. Um, we grow our team just to achieve more, more goals. Maybe we didn't say this before but we are 12 people right now on in the team uh, mm -hmm. between developer designers um marketing people and it's just moving slowly uh slower than steady but moving forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
not so slow to be honest like it's it's crazy Whoa, fast not slow. Maybe it's, yeah like i know we are supposed to be sloths but we are trying to like achieve a lot in a very short amount of time when you think about it like we started up with a group of four and like long story short then it wasn't four exactly and it was a bit less and now it's 12. Mm -hmm. And just hiring all of those people, just interviewing them is just a huge job. And then you have to design a new system. You have to hire designers to do the UI. Mm -hmm, you have to mm -hmm. hire more artists to actually come up with like Twitter posts and new attributes and all kinds of different things that we have on in line. So, so far we have just been scaling the startup to be honest. Mm -hmm. And right now we, like we, we are already implementing like the breeding. This is what the update is about. The breeding backend is actually finished. Mm -hmm. We just need to build a front end for it. Mm -hmm. um, like we have scaled this business into, let's say, a single team that can produce a lot of good stuff. If breeding works out well, uh, and fusion, by the way, if those work out well, and if people will want to actually play the game, essentially, because maybe it's not a game in a sense like it's not World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. but it's a game of collecting things and like it's kind of fusing things to actually end up with having a mega sloth which mm -hmm. is a super rare collectible that's not available on the market yet hmm. um, but it's sloth. gonna be once once people merge you know eight mythic attributes into one they're gonna get a mega sloth mm. so it's a completely new collection this collection is gonna be actually uh dynamic because like let's assume that someone merges the first mega slot. There is only one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, but sure. then maybe following that, some other people like, oh, I want that one as well. And the only way, like, you will not be able to obtain it in any other way. You will not be able to mint it. You can only fuse it <laughs> or evolve it rather, because mm -hmm. like evol evolution in our system is like the special kind of fusion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like we have some, we, like, okay, I'm rambling a bit. We're on track. We have a long <laughs> roadmap that's ahead of us. And we just want to start implementing this step by step instead of just saying, like, we are going to give you all tomorrow because it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, we are normal, ordinary people. We are developers. We are down to earth. And this is probably why did, we did not great uh, a great job at marketing because, like, we didn't want to oversell anything. We didn't mm -hmm. want to like lie to people essentially because this is what marketing is yeah. at times at least <laughs> so we didn't lie and we won't and yeah that's it we will just grow organically if people yeah. learn to trust us i mean that's definitely a great strategy because you know a lot of people you know and we've talked about it throughout this interview where people just over promise you know things that are going to happen with the community are going to be on the roadmap hey we're going to the moon tomorrow and it's just like it's not happening and then they just kind of get rug pulled so yeah, you know, great model I like to use is just under promise over deliver. There, there you go. go. That's you it. it. That's it. Yes. <laughs> you got it. Uh, I almost forgot. And what about do you have any plans for like staking? I mean, we are not a cryptocurrency. And okay. to be honest, being a cryptocurrency is is a whole different set of uh, legal problems, actually. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. So for now, no. And for any foreseeable future, like we have a lot of different things to deliver that are way like that are. So let's say that we did think about introducing more cryptocurrency based mechanisms, but right now we want to focus on things that are not legally compromising because mm -hmm. if they are, we will need to get a lot of legal help yep. and this will just take a lot of time. So we don't want to focus on those first, because as I said, we want to establish the pattern of delivering and if we are stopped by some legal problems we will not deliver right that's true that is true so mm -hmm. as you guys want to hone in and what you're good at and bring that you know bring the fun you want to bring the fun and bring the build the community first and then maybe all the other stuff can come down the line <laughs> for sure for sure yeah i do want to ask you guys also how have you guys heard about the infts and what do you think about a sloth, sloth AI? <laughs> sloth AI, wow. <laughs> um, honestly, I have never thought about it. Maybe the dream yeah. I take it. Um, 
I have seen projects that are doing uh, interesting things like that. Um, to be honest, we haven't kind of give it a, a real talk, but we'll be interesting to try. Um, we are not AI developers, mm -hmm. uh, but we always could learn because learning is fun. Um, but it's not in the plan right now. Uh, I'm actually not sure how to even put it together. Uh, I guess if we have a, uh, some kind of metaverse design, it will be mm -hmm. something interesting to mix and maybe do something like that. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of an incomplete question uh, answer, sorry, uh, but it's because, yeah, it's too open, you know. Is there AI is there a Solana continue. metaverse? Oh, uh, maybe I mean, not yet. Hmm. Oh. I think there are some proposals from different projects, but maybe ne uh, there is nothing. It's nothing really fully. Standard. Yeah, nothing yeah, fully complete yeah. yet. Ooh, mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. going to be, yeah, that's going to be dope once <laughs> that comes out. It will be. I can't wait for that, for sure. So, well, it's, guys... it's mostly about communities coming together, right? Because yeah. Yeah, that, everyone yeah. can propose something on their own, and then the question is, is it going to get adapted by people? Also true. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have a, a, a favorite metaverse right now? You got like Sandbox, Decentraland, Somnium... Uh, what else you got? I'm not even sure. Uh, you guys don't even like yeah, don't yeah You don't I even don't like know. ETH. You don't like ETH. <laughs> <laughs> they was bombing out ETH earlier. Oh, they <laughs> was. I'm saying, work. yo, get this man Vitalik out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, my answer is just, I, I, I don't know, to be honest. I'm just so focused on development right now. I'm not even up to date with news in, in, mm -hmm. like, in what's you around us. You're dropping gems like, about the, the, the Metaplex and the and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I needed that information. That's good information. I like that. Yeah, so Metaplex is, like, crucial for my development, so I know all about it. But... <laughs> Like, so for example, in New Zealand, we're under full lockdown. Like, we cannot even leave the house essentially unless you go for groceries. So, really? We have been, yeah. Wow. So, we have been like that for the past two months because we have roughly 80 new cases a day on average. Mm. But uh, what I wanted to say is that I'm just working so much on this project that. Mm -hmm. Even if I wasn't on lockdown, I wouldn't leave the house anyway. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so, I feel that. Yeah, I feel it, that. I feel that. For sure. For sure. Okay. Okay. Mm. But So, that's all the questions that I have for you guys. This was very informative. Uh, like, you guys are definitely the one of the dopest projects that we've talked to so far. Easily. Uh, is there anything that you want to, you know, tell the people? Uh, well, actually, I got one thing. Oh, I got one go thing. Ahead. You know, I got the final question, the inbox question. Uh, <laughs> noise. So, you know, in the NFT, well, not in the NFT space, but NFT, when you think about our NFTs in general, they're relatively new. A lot of people, you know, like they're already kind of like not a lot of people there, but there are a good number of people still trying to grasp the concept of cryptocurrency. And then there's even more people trying to grasp the concept of so what is so an NFT. So yeah. when you think about NFTs or as I would ask you guys, you know, both of you guys can answer. Um, I would say, what would you say to somebody who says uh, or just someone who's like on the outside looking in who says, you know, an NFT has no value? Uh, what is the point of an NFT? Where do you even think you're going to go with the NFT in terms of just like gaining adoption? Mm -hmm. They're saying it's stupid. <laughs> I've come across those a lot. What is this stupid nonsense? I yeah, mean, I um, heard that a lot as well. Yeah, go yeah. on, Slappy. Um, I think new things are always, or disruption things are always considered either stupid or that they are not going to work. And it happens with internet uh, before the 2000s, and it actually mm -hmm. crashed, right? Um, I think we're just uh, seeing the top of the iceberg of what uh, NFTs in cryptocurrency in general could, could do. Um, what well, probably two years ago, we wouldn't be here if the NFT itself concept uh, would be created or developed, right? Mm, 
So I think there is a lot of potential. One of the things that I usually talk about when I'm trying to explain to NFTs to people that it's not into the crypto space, which I have been doing quite a lot in the last couple of weeks, it's just think about the collection. Like people used to collect a lot of things and there is actually TV shows Stamps. about that kind of stuff. Examples. Stamps. Stamps. <laughs> and people invest in art in general. And you probably will say, why would you pay millions of dollars for that frame that you had in your house if no one is going to look at it, right? Because mm -hmm. that's one of the things that people say, like, oh, but it's in your computer. No one is going to look at it. Okay, um, if I buy a real uh, a real painting, I have to invite the whole world to my house <laughs> to actually show them the the painting. No, and if I want to show mm -hmm. the to show it to someone and it's coming to my house, I will just open my computer and show it. But I think overall, NFTs will bring more than that. It's going to be a new utility and it's building a community because you are not just uh, paying for uh, a JPG. You actually go and join the discord join mm -hmm. the twitter and start to um talk with people you kind of create this uh virtual network of people so there is more than just going to a museum or a gallery art buy the thing you never know the artist you just pay the money take it to mm -hmm. your house and that's it end of the story in here is, there is way more that people can't understand um at the end of the day yes it's a collection and the whole point of the collection is probably get the rarest attributes or the rarest one it's something that is probably happening probably more in the Solana ecosystem. It's more people is jumping in to try to earn a lot of money in one day. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a behavior that probably is going to change because projects now probably have to create more to actually de deliver value. Um, and it's kind of what the Slow Patrol is trying to do. We didn't just create a collection of JPGs. We actually are, have a, a strong roadmap in like we said before, we are developing and delivering. So I think that's kind of the thing that is going to be coming in the next couple of months, a couple of years, probably, if mm -hmm. this keeps going. And mm -hmm. different approaches, for example, the Thugbird, they have a strong community. Um, and it's it, that's what they sell. They are in mm -hmm. a strong community. They are all together. If someone needs help, kind of everyone is jumping on Twitter to uh, chill with them and stuff like that. So it's all that. Mm, okay. Okay. For okay. me, yeah, for me, I mean, for me, it's definitely all about the utility. In the beginning, when I was getting NFTs, I would just like, you know, choose whatever I thought was the dopest art. And then you start to realize, well, a lot of people got dope art. So it's like, you know, and I do consider, you know, having a strong community, having a phone in the community is definitely part of that. But when you guys, you know, having the breeding and the fusion, the mega sloths, like it, it's like it's more tangible, like things that I can actually do, you know, with the art uh, and with the space, you know, and enjoy having this fun with other people. I think that, you know, that's a lot that's a lot better uh, for the long so, run. Actually, uh, I was talking with some some friends mm -hmm. and they like not into crypto at all. And they just knew that I was launching this product. So like, yeah, I'm going to get a sloth. So just as a sign of support or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then they did. And then they actually bought another one on the open market when they read the <laughs> article about breeding system. And I, I was talking with them lately and they were like, and you know what? Because they're also locked down, by the way. So they were just having a, a conversation with some other friends online. Mm -hmm. And apparently they have spent four hours just theory crafting about what can happen in what circumstances <laughs> with the breeding system and the fusion system, like how this can go in many different ways. So it just, from my perspective, this is what's important. It brought joy to them, actually. Mm -hmm. Like they, they were just having fun talking about it. And then when he was referring that conversation to me, he was just, you know, happy. And that's what this is about. Like NFTs, I think right now, they bring joy to people because it's new, it's fun, like people like, Actually, do new things, people can have two reactions. They can either fear them or mm -hmm. they can be excited about them. Mm. So if people get excited about our project, amazing. Uh, if they fear NFTs in general, just wait and see how it all, uh, like, in, because be too the, late. the whole ecosystem. <laughs> no, not even that. So uh, if you are into it, 
to gain financial gains. Obviously, mm -hmm. like it's very important to have the right timing. But oh, if yeah. you're in it just to have fun, like you'll be able to buy a second hand uh, or on the secondary, secondary market, market, you will, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll be able to buy yourself a slot and you, you know, breed it. It doesn't matter if you buy it today or in a month or in two, like it's going to be a possibility. Mm -hmm. So people will be able to just jump in and enjoy the system. And that's one thing. And the other thing is, it's maybe not a direct response to your question, but it's just a thought that I had for actually over a year now. And it's just mm -hmm. the whole crypto space as is right now is basically wild, wild west. Everybody does whatever they want. Oh yeah. And it's getting more regulated right now, but it's still pretty wild. But imagine that in a couple of years, what blockchain is like what smart contracts are is essentially having a contract between people written down in a digital form that's immutable. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you can write down a legal contract into an NFT. Imagine that, for example, you have, I don't know, your last will written down in a contract. Mm. Oh, yeah. And then oh, if, yeah. if you die, actually, like the coroner knows that, boom, he has to make a transaction on the blockchain, then automatically all of your assets are just moved around the world mm. because you decided to do so. Like, I think this is actually the future, not only for like, you know, financials, but it's also for the legal system and in general for interactions of many different kinds. Mm. Because, for mm. example, it's possible that if, uh, let's go... To simplify it, if a Solana transfer from goes from here to here, then this real world element has to, for example, send a package to someone, right? Mm -hmm. And this package can be like, I don't know, a new car for, you know, a, for your wife, whatever. I don't know. It's your anniversary. So you just send it. It's then prepared and sent. Like it can have real world interactions that are just written down in the blockchain. And I think this is the future. What we are doing right now is we are literally exploring the bleeding edge of technology to see what's possible. And after that, really interesting things can come out. Mm, sure. Okay. I'm okay, definitely okay. stealing that example from you with the mm -hmm. will. Um, and Salty, yes, I definitely enjoyed what you said there. I, I've heard uh, Gary V, he put it uh, poignantly, you know, saying that, you can't show anyone art in your house, but online you can. You can actually, you know, build that community, show people, have people experience what you have. Uh, just like the same way it's like, you know, they're trying to say it's not, it has no value, but does a blue check on Instagram or Twitter have value? <laughs> yeah, it kind of exactly. does. <laughs> it kind of does. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, I def I, I definitely bo enjoyed both your answers, and I'm definitely stealing the will. I let them know <laughs> the blockchain wills. Oh yeah, I like yeah, that. blockchain will. You know I'm gonna have those <laughs> NFTDs, yo. When I go by the house, got that real estate NFTDs. Y'all know where to come find me. <laughs> uh, I should totally make a patent for it now. Like in in half a year, someone is gonna implement it. I'm like, damn. Hey, if anything, I can't code it. You gotta be the first one to make an NFT deed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got about until this video releases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys gave us a lot of dope information. Uh, it definitely like I, I like you guys' approach to the whole NFT game because, like you said, it is the wild wild west, man. It's just you could get you can get burned out there, you know. And yeah, to, you to see you guys, uh, your chill approach to just you know really you know just giving back to the people that are supporting you yep. yeah and i'll i'll even piggyback off that it's really refreshing you know having talked to you guys because lord like me and deza we do this almost every day where we're going through different nft projects we're looking at what's great what's not great just kind of you know trying to inform our community and also just the general public about you know everything going on so they <laughs> can have more information and be more well suited to either buy nfts invest in them or just in general just you know find ones they like and we just go through so many words. It's a cash grab. It just seems artificial or it's just copying, organic. Just, and you're yeah, just, like, just copying uh, people. It's just, it hurts my brain sometimes when I think about it. And like I said, it's just a breath of fresh air to see that you guys are doing something that's, you know, not so many people are doing, to be honest. And I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, thank you. We actually were talking about, about promoting us with, with, with some people. And they said, like, because we also didn't want to have, like, a 
paid promotion, you know, we pay and then they tweet. Yeah. And then, then we said, like, we actually don't want that. Like, if you want to work with us, we want a partnership. We don't want to be like a, another project that you shill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's still like ongoing discussion because for them, it's like, we have never worked with anyone that told us that. Like, that's, I don't know. We have to think about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I suppose our organic approach is just new to the market in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it works out. I guess the best way to get that, you know, that organicness is they got to come to you be like, hey, I want to work with you guys, you know? Um, yeah. It's hard. Definitely. It's hard. It's hard. So it's like they got to see the utility. They got to see the enjoyment for themselves. And then. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, sometimes people just don't know. And that's why me and Frank, you know, we worked hard, so hard at this every day because we know that there's something out there for everybody, especially in the mm -hmm. NFT community. There's definitely something out there for everybody. So, uh, we're, we're definitely trying to get in front of their faces and we tell them, even if we flame it, even if me and Frank don't like it, like, <laughs> Hey, we're going to show you, we're going to try and show you everything about it so that at least you can come to your own decision. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely. Inform, inform. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you know, information is power in today's world. This is like the most powerful thing out there. Oh yeah. And you could actually be the bridge between the people that it's not into the crypto space uh, to actually jump and start to buy their first NFT. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Wow. That's what we're trying to strive towards. <laughs> Real quick, uh, before you guys do your outro, because uh, the time's almost up, how do you guys uh, feel about Web3 and where it's going? I mean, Web3 is at least from my perspective, it's just a catchy name for another JavaScript <laughs> library. <laughs> That's the truth. Like the, the blockchain is the big difference and Web3 yeah. is just the way to connect to the blockchain. So, so did, I mean, did you see like it's uh, a good marketing strategy? Yeah. 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 Did you see like, uh, just well, for Facebook? The record, he, yeah, yeah. He doesn't like JavaScript. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay with TypeScript, okay? I'm okay with it. But JavaScript, oh man, don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tried to do the whole computer science thing when I went to college. Not for me. Not for me at all. I couldn't do it. So I definitely I definitely respect you guys for being able to, you know, I mean, if I if I had only seen the writing on the wall, I could have been the, an NFT uh, programmer myself, <laughs> but nah. Yeah, this man did not get the message from Belshazzar. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it, it also gets easier in time, you know. Like when I started yeah. off, it was it was daunting, but then like in time, like everything, I suppose you just if you get more experience with it, it just gets easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might want to give it a go and create yourself your own NFT. <sighs> you know, it's funny actually. Yeah, I actually started. Uh... Or at least I'm gonna start soon taking a like a a coding boot camp. So I'll see how that goes. I don't know if I'll be uh, able let, to do let it. Let us know. I, I just I just you know, I'm just trying to get more well versed in it. Like even if I don't mm -hmm. make my own, like I wanna be able to talk to, you know, you guys and have high level conversation, you know, be able to talk to Vitalik if I needed to, you know. So definitely, definitely. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm interested in what you guys are actually doing behind the scenes. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, reach us out if you need some help coding. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not joking. Like, yeah, we are here to help. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'll definitely uh, hit you guys up in Discord. <laughs> uh, but uh, we only got a minute left, so guys, uh, you know, final thoughts. Uh, take it you guys can take it away man take it away let the you community know, know. chill <laughs> chill you know tell them how your day's been out or whatever you want to tell them <laughs> all right yeah. so go first get uh a slow patrol nft on magic Wait eden for... fuck the other oh, magic eden. <laughs> 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 um, we're gonna have a, our own marketplace soon by the way but this is yeah. more news coming it's gonna be actually charity related i know there is one minute only left but soul for good like google them those are really cool guys they are doing really good for the solana ecosystem that's charity oriented we are mm -hmm. partner partnering up with them we're gonna, gonna do some cool stuff 
with them. Mm. Okay. Very dope. Very dope. This was a great interview. Uh, peace out, guys. It's nighttime for me. I'm going to sleep. Hope you guys have a good rest <laughs> of your day. Yes, Thank sir. You for having us, guys. Thank you so much. No Catch you guys Bye. later. Appreciate it. Yes. Peace out. Yep.